We can still be kind mm. and loving, but but speak truth and be strong in those words and stand up for God, yeah. stand up for what's right. We just don't have to yell and scream and pound our fists yeah. and um, just say things that we'll regret. Yeah. It's about being calm and, and sober in demeanor and having those respectful conversations, even if they're uh, not in agreement. My sister Candace and I have been working in the entertainment industry ever since we were little kids. I think I was nine, she was like four or something when she was on Full House. And uh, siblings are rivals, but not us. Candace, we, ne we, we, we don't fight. I mean, maybe, okay, when we were little. Maybe when we were little, I used to throw you down on the floor, tickle torture, and I would make the long spit strand, spit, like, like, go Like, pin us down. Yeah, yeah, when we were little. But now, <laughs> we're past that. I mean, look, there's no competition. I mean, look, everybody knows Growing Pains was a much better show than Full House. There's no competition. I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't argue that point anymore. None. And look, everybody knows in our family that I'm the better dancer, but did I go on Dancing with the Stars <laughs> to prove that and rub it in your face? No, I let no, you wear no. the crown. Yeah, you let me take third, so first could be reserved for you. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, I that's know, not I how know. we are. But, uh, <laughs> hey. Do we want to talk about the fact that the go-kart oh. ran, over, oh, <laughs> ran over me? You ran over me with the go-kart. That's right, that was right here on, on TVN <laughs> for one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and I did not mean to do that. <laughs> you cut me off. See, that's what happened. You were ahead, and I was taking the inside lane, and then you cut me off, and I went right up over the top of you. But you know what? We're not competitive. We're not competitive. And you were so gracious at the end, we brought in the camera and said, could we finish the episode with a prayer in the emergency room? <laughs> she's kind, she's gracious. I think the I actually said on. you need to bring in the camera so everyone knows I'm okay. I got my director hat, my producer hat on, yeah. and I was like, we still gotta wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's so cool that we get to be doing this. What are the chances that two kids in the same family would not only be on TV, but uh, come to faith in the Lord yeah. and then see the value of using platforms like you have with a million billion different things uh, and a show like this to be able to encourage people. And uh, yeah. I, think, I think that's awesome. I do too. Um, well, hey, listen, I, wanted, I want us to talk today about about the value of encouraging each other and the value of family. Um, the Bible says, encourage each other and build each other up. And I just wanna take a minute and say, you've been a huge encouragement to a million people, but also to me. I look at you and, I, and I think, here's my little sister. She's, you've been committed to Val for how many years now? 25. For 25 years. That's su such a rare treasure uh, to, to see that with anybody and, and especially in Hollywood. And then you, you've been raising your kids. Uh, everybody knows you have three and they're all grown up now. Mm -hmm. And you've been living out your, your convictions in Hollywood with kindness and compassion and courage. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge encouragement even to your big brother. Thank you. Well, you've certainly encouraged me along the way because I see you take such a leadership role and be unashamed and una unafraid to share your faith everywhere you go, literally everywhere on the streets sharing your faith. And um, I've, I've just, as your little sister, watched you and have been so proud of you and the way you've handled so many things, you know, that some are wonderful and some go awry and you're yeah, like, oh, yeah. ah, and yeah, you, so you just kind of- I should probably keep my mouth shut a little bit more often. <laughs> you kind of have to figure out how to navigate it. And um, you've, you know, you've paved the way for me. So sometimes I go, oh, this didn't work for Kirk. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna try that. it this way. Or, or, you know, vice versa. This, Kirk did that so well and I'm so proud of you. So thank you for being so bold and sharing your faith and, and making me feel comfortable to do the same. You were on The View <laughs> and you, you were hosting The View with people that had very different opinions from you. How do you keep your cool and keep from criticizing and condemning other people who are maybe sometimes not very <laughs> uh, tolerant of your views yeah. and actually really are quick to want to come down on you for having the faith yeah. that you have. 
I know that the Holy Spirit it, it gives us the fruit of the Spirit when we're in Christ. Joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And so I feel as uh, because God gives each and every one of us self-control, um, that's something that we need to have when we're in those yeah. hot topics and divisive conversations. And a lot of times I know our emotions can ju wanna jump out first, but yeah. it's so important to represent Christ well. And I think that means taking a pause, taking a breath, take a beat, yeah. consider, the other perspective, yeah. where they're coming from. Take a second to pray and, and then speak your voice, speak yeah. your opinion. But I think just that calmness in the very beginning really, really helps when you take that, that, that beat and that breath. To, um, because I don't think that anyone's ever gonna change their opinion when you yell at them or bark at them and mm. tell them how awful they are for how they're thinking. I remember one time I went on The View um, I don't think you were there that time. Mm -mm. I wish you were there that one time. You would have had my back. But I went yeah. on there and uh, I just knew that what I had to talk about was not gonna go over well with everybody. And so yeah. I, I thought, okay, I just have to somehow keep joy from coming after me. And so I don't know if they told you what I did, but I came in and I thought, how can I keep, how can I get joy on my good side? And so I came in with a Mike Seaver pillowcase and I signed it to joy. Love. We're Kurt. talking about Joy Behar, by Joy the way. Joy Behar, right, yep. right, right. And I came in and I, and I pulled it out of my back pocket and I said, Joy, I heard that when you were a teenager, <laughs> you were the president of the Mike Seaver fan club and I saved the last remaining oh. signed pillowcase from my fan club and I presented it to her and she was just like, oh, oh thank you. And, and you know, it just seemed to sweeten her up enough yes. that she just sort of sat yep. back and let me talk. That's so great. <laughs> That was, that's perfect. Well, I didn't have to exercise <laughs> kindness and compassion like you did. I think I just sort of th threw her off balance just yeah. enough to be able to talk. When you think of your obligation to represent Christ well, like you said, mm -hmm. sometimes I struggle with this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I struggle with, okay, that person just said something that's false. And mm -hmm. it's not only personally offensive, it's dishonoring to God. Mm -hmm. Do I represent? right now because mm -hmm. I have an audience who's watching or do I go, you know what? I'm not gonna change this person's mind on an individual level, so I'll talk to them backstage maybe or work on a relationship and over time or do I have a responsibility yeah. to like represent right now yeah. and correct a, an error? It's so hard and I think it depends on the situation. It really does. I mean, on that in that platform, being on The View, it was, it's your job to speak your voice. Mm. So there are okay, many so that's times- what, that's what they want. That's what they want. There are many times when I knew my argument wasn't gonna, gonna convince anyone and I would have rather <laughs> stayed quiet. Yeah. But I couldn't because I had to speak. But um, it's, you know, it was always nice to sometimes follow up those conversations. Sometimes they just disappeared after. It's like, right. ah, we've moved on to the next topic. But when it's something incredibly important, I had follow-up conversations and, and you try to help someone understand, here is my point of view, here's why this was offensive. How has your family supported you specifically with all the demands of your career? They've been really wonderful over the years, and but it wasn't without struggle and I think that's important because you might be watching and thinking like, oh, well, you've, you've got it all together and you have this perfectly supportive family. And the truth is, yes, they, they are, but it was, it was hard to juggle that, especially with my husband and then mm -hmm. balance raising our kids yeah. and, and going away for work and coming back into the house. And I don't know how you do that. I mean, how do you, how do you, how, I mean, you have a husband who's a professional hockey player and then you're a professional actress, you have kids and, the, I mean, we travel all the time. You well, I, I took 10 years off while that was playing pro hockey and I wasn't working. I stayed home and raised the kids. It was challenging. You know, there were days we'd come home and we weren't, we weren't loving on each other and, and talking a whole lot because we had to figure things out. But I know the foundation of our marriage in God is what has got us through the valleys and the low points within the marriage and, and, have come through beautifully. And I honestly didn't even 
think I would have such a supportive husband yeah. and children at this point in my life and career. Yeah. But they've been phenomenal cheerleaders and it really makes all the difference because when you don't have people supporting, it uh, it just makes everything discouraging and, and yeah. difficult. Did you come, you came to faith before Val or after Val? Well before, so. Well before, right. Yeah. I'm thinking of the person out there who's watching this going, oh, I wish I had a husband who had the same kind of faith that was praying for me and we could share that together. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time in your marriage where you weren't on the same page sp spiritually? And what advice oh, yeah. could you give to maybe some wives who are yeah. saying, I wish my husband was on the same page? Yeah. Val and I were the same type of Christian when we first met. We both believed in Jesus, but we only went to visit him on Easter and Christmas. Got it. That was it. And then my faith started evolving because of our relationship and you just saying, hey, can read this. Hey, can read that. But Val didn't want anything to do with it when I started saying, hey, I'd like to go to church. He was like, great, you can do that. I don't, I'm not interested in doing that. And so I turned to 1 Peter 3.1 in the Bible that says, wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands so that even if they do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won over by the conduct of their wife. Mm. And this verse put it back on me that if I can show Val who Christ is by my conduct, by the way I talk to him, by the way I interact mm. with him, by the way I, oh gosh, Kirk, you did a whole movie on this. <laughs> Fireproof, but yeah, it's yeah. But yours is real. This is yours is real life. The, all the principles of it. If I can, I don't even have to talk about God. But if I show him th through my actions to be Christ-like within our marriage, he's going to see changes in me that he won't be able to deny. And that's what I did. And I prayed for his salvation every day, and prayed that verse over our marriage, and tried to change me. And, and then a few years later, Val did come to Christ. Mm. We were baptized together. He actually ba baptized me in the Atlantic Ocean. It was pretty incredible. And, um, you know, we, uh, the other part of the encouragement I want to say is that Val has become a, a wonderful leader in our home as a spiritual leader. Mm. But there's still a lot that he looks to me for in spiritually leading because he's still growing. I've had more years yeah. in, in nurturing and developing my relationship with Christ. And that's okay. You can't expect someone who's come to Christ to just automatically be yeah. uh, at, it, have right. all the Bible knowledge and have the heart transformation that, that you have. And it's wonderful to grow together and nurture them along the way. But um, as much as I'm like, man, I want a man to come in, like my husband to just lead, lead, lead spiritually. It's amazing when that happens, but even if the growth feels small, it's still growth and it's there and continue yeah. to nurture and pray over it and be supportive of that growth. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know, not only has Val come to, to faith in, in Christ, but he's also grown a beard, which is, which is what every man ultimately wants to do. I mean, I, what is a lion without his mane? Uh, Candace, obviously so many people associate you with Full House or, or with Fuller House, but uh, on a personal level, you and I, uh, have been experiencing some, some growing pains with our own kids. They're now becoming young adults mm -hmm. and our role as uh, parents are shifting. And we're kind of moving into this new role, not so much as supreme leader authority in the home and we're now becoming hopefully the trusted advisor mm -hmm. who gets to speak into their life. So uh, uh, t talk for a minute about your kids. You have three. Yes, I have three, Natasha, Lev and Max. They are 23, 21, and 19. <laughs> wow, they're close together. Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> they are. And they're great. And they, they don't live at home anymore. They don't live in, at, at home. Mm -mm. Um, and so what's, what's Lev doing? So Lev works for our family business full time. He great. lives up in Napa Valley. Nice. And he's Rough also life, but somebody had to go up there. I know someone had to Valley. go up there. And he's also in his uh, third year at Liberty University. 
which he, Great he school. does online, yeah. And then Natasha, uh, she lives in LA as a roommate. She's acting, she also sings. She's shooting a movie right now in Nashville and pursuing her acting career. Okay. And then Max just graduated from high school. He plays hockey and he's trying to figure out where he's gonna go to school and play hockey or maybe go work for yeah. dad. We're not sure yet. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and then you have your fourth child, Boris, <laughs> who um, he loves me, he misses me. It's actually their uh, giant Rottweiler who really <laughs> wants to eat me every time I go over to their house. He might. <laughs> <laughs> he might want to eat you. He might. So we were talking about your, your faith and, and Val's mm -hmm. faith being something that you share that's great when, it's, when you've got that going on. And if it's not going on, you can be praying for them, winning them over even without a word uh, and letting the Holy Spirit uh, work through you. What are some of the things that you and Val are able to do to keep your relationship great now that the kids are gone? Often that glue that's holding us together is the kids. Yeah, it was a very interesting year last year <laughs> because of Oh yeah, with everything going with on. With everything going on in the, in the world. And because we were, actually all three kids were home. And it brought a whole new dynamic because we were all together in close quarters and spent more time together than we have in a very, very long time. Yeah. And what I'm grateful for, what the silver lining was for us last year through all the hardships was that spending that much time together my relationship with Val grew much stronger. Mm -hmm. And yes, the kids were home, but we just, well, everyone's busy, everyone's out, everyone's yeah. doing their own thing. And coming back together, we got to know each other again, mm. spending all that time together. And he made me laugh and I made him laugh. And it was like, oh yeah. Oh wait, this, I like this you. Is what, this wait a minute, is what, that's this why, is what I fell in love with. This is why, this is why we got together. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And it's so easy for, for us to get so distracted with so many things mm -hmm. going on. And, uh, especially when you have careers going on and kids are learning school. Have you found it challenging when for the first 20 years, you are essentially, um, you know, the source of law in their <laughs> life. Yes. You are the supreme leader. Uh, you're their provider, you're their protector. Uh -huh. And you set, the, you, set the, you set the rules. And now that authority role is being shifted to trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. um, I find that to be a challenging transition. How, how about you? It is challenging. It's, it's hard to, to let them go. Yeah. And you can feel a sense of loss as well. And yet I look at them as a, in a very excited way because I'm happy that their wings are, are mature and they get to go fly on their own. And I love seeing who God has made them and where God is gonna take them. And that is exciting to me as a parent. I don't fear it. That's awesome. Cause sometimes it scares me to death <laughs> to think that I'm in charge of shaping the heart and mind and yeah. soul of the next gen, some of the next generation of human beings. Uh, but I'm I, gonna... fortunately I've got an angel that I married as my <laughs> yes, wife. And yes, she you has did. been making up for all of my <laughs> mistakes. But don't, don't you think about it in terms of, I look at us and I'm like, mom and dad did the best that they could. Yeah. And I'm sure they could look back and go, oh, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. But I'm they like- They don't know half the th bad things that I did <laughs> when I was a kid. But you still turned out okay. <laughs> and I still turned out okay. So I think, you know, our kids are gonna do a bunch of bad stuff we won't know that they're doing, but they're gonna turn out okay. Yeah, and it's such a big responsibility. Uh, I, I know that you take it seriously. My, Chelsea and I take it so seriously. Um, and you're right, one of the hardest things to do is to see your kids, to let your kids make mistakes because when they're little, you get to put this little uh, fence around them. It's a crib or it's a little uh, backyard fence mm -hmm. and you're keeping the bad things out of their world. Yep. But when they get older, that fence just has to keep getting wider and wider until it encompasses the entire world. And now every big bad wolf, every scary yep. thing, they have to learn how to deal with it. Yeah. And, uh, and like you said, if we let our kids if we plant the seeds of wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, the book of Proverbs says that, that that wisdom that we've planted in their heart and in their mind will speak to them. Mm -hmm. Mom said this, I remember dad said this. Oh, yeah. I, I used to hear that from, and, and we've got to let them make their decisions. And when they make a mistake and the consequences come, somebody once said this to me, Kirk, it's sometimes the very best thing that could happen because yeah. here's what happens the consequences will prove that every word of God is true. Because when God says, if you choose to sin, you choose to suffer. And you don't even need to tell them that they're gonna yeah. suffer because 
life's consequences just hit them in the face yep. and it just proved to them, wow, God's word is absolutely true. I exactly. can trust it uh -huh. and I should do what it says. And so, but I know it's hard. You just don't, you just don't like seeing them flop and fall yeah. when, you, when you, you, you know you could stop it. I know, it is hard. I mean, so for so many years, because my Val coached our boys in hockey through their whole lives, yeah. but you see it from a coach's perspective. You know, it's like, hey, if you forgot your jersey at home, you don't get to play today. Right. Like, that's basic 101, but, you gotta bring your gear. And you know, as a mom, mom, you're sitting there and you're, you're going, just you're, let him you're, borrow his jersey and he right. can go play. Or, or I was going to bring him his jersey, but yeah. I, I, I had to let him leave it on the floor. Yeah, exactly. Lesson. And you know what? It's like, and, and any, ch any child that happens to you, do you think they're ever going to leave their jersey at home again? The answer is no. They learn their lesson. It's like you have to take that circumstance. You have to take the consequence, I mean. And, uh, but you learn your lesson. Yeah. And... Uh, and I think it's great how God ends up using our kids to teach us lessons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, there are blind spots that I know that I have as a dad and I see my kids acting just like me and I feel sometimes like I'm looking in a mirror and going, wait, where did he learn how to do that? Or where did he get that attitude from? And I say, you know, I think, yeah. I think he may have gotten that from me or she may have gotten that from me. And God uses our kids uh, as a tool as he continues to, to, to mature us. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. so right. Let's talk about our mom and dad. Now, I know that I look nothing like <laughs> our father. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you look nothing I look, like I mom. I look nothing like mom, <laughs> nothing. You know, she's now, her hair is now like yours, and now she's wearing the Candace Cameron beret line of clothing, and so you guys look even more like clones and a, a mini-me yeah. of mom than ever before. It's true. Uh, do, you, do you see some of mom mom's parenting in you, in the, in the person that you are today, that it's rubbed off on you in the way that maybe you're parenting your kids? And then I'll, I'll answer the same with dad. Oh, you probably have a, fu a funny answer. No, I, I, really, like I really don't. You've thought about this. No, you know, I have a beard um, because I understand that we have uh, names for people who don't have beards, women and children. Um, but dad never had a beard. No. He had a big handlebar mustache. Yes, he did. <laughs> which was, that was a, that was a pretty I never pretty saw it in person, though. Look. <laughs> I just saw those pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. I, I see things um, in myself that, that are from mom and dad. Yeah. And um, I remember lots of the sayings that I said I would never say when I was an yeah. adult and yeah. that I say them all the time. But um, I like to think that I got my sense of humor from dad. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know. Um, and may maybe I just, dad always says, well, dad, you dad, get me the best. You get me the best. Yeah, dad. dad, dad <laughs> and I get dad. dad. Dad cracks himself up all the time. I mean, he loves to crack himself up. I he know. thinks. He's just hilarious. <laughs> Which is really, really great funny. as you get older. You just, you laugh at your own jokes. Yeah. You don't need friends. You can just, you can tell yourself <laughs> jokes. You forget the punchlines and it's funny all over again. <laughs> Oh, oh, it was so, it was so cute. I think, um, you know, we had a, a, a day celebrating our aunt's aunt Joanne. life. And, but it was hard and, and dad was standing next to me and he just would start crying, thinking about her. And then he would just tell himself a joke and he'd snap right out of it. See, that's <laughs> it just, pretty that's, cute. that's so great. That's great. Um, and I, I like to think, I like to hope that, just a just a, an ounce of mom's heart and compassion I know, and right? empathy has rubbed off on me totally. in the way that she has shared that with anyone she comes in contact with her entire life. It's such a huge example that I've seen with mom since I was a little girl until today. It's never stopped. And I just always look at her and I think, oh, I, I hope I consider others before myself as much as mom does. Well, you do, and I wanna talk more about that in just a second. Hey, thanks for staying with us. Uh, all right, I wanna turn the conversation now from family to faith, and specifically to the subjects of joy, strength, and kindness. So, so Candace, today, uh, true joy mm -hmm. 
seems to be rare. It's hard to find. People are, are, are distracted, we're discouraged, we're even to the point of despair with things going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you find joy when the storms are circling around you? I mean, you're kind of known for your smile, your bubbly personality. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you take joy supplements in the morning? <laughs> or like, I don't I know, what do you- I what do you, those. <laughs> <laughs> if you find some, let me know. Um, well, I think it's good to define the difference between joy and happiness. Joy is a, is a goodness that comes from inside you that sustains you when your circumstances around you are tough, are bad, um, when they are unhappy circumstances. Happiness is conditionally based. Happiness means that the external things around you are going well. And, um, and that can change at any moment. So it's important when we talk about it to know that there are many days that I may be unhappy because the things going on around me might not be great, yeah. but I still have joy inside of me because joy is never dependent upon my circumstances. And the joy that I have as a, as a believer and a Christian comes from God. It's knowing that I am at peace with him. I'm justified before him. Uh, he walks with me. His spirit is upon me. It's knowing my future that's in heaven. It's having an eternal perspective. That's where I find my joy when my circumstances are difficult. Wow, and, and, you explain, and you, you're laying that out really, really nice. I actually didn't realize this until mom recently told me, uh, you're Women's Day Magazine's chief spiritual advisor. Like, can't you didn't tell me this. You're like, a, does this make you a priestess or something? Or like, what? Like, this, is, this is, sounds pretty, pretty official. Now, now I, want, I want to ask to, you to just break that down a little bit because you just said uh, that joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, how do you get that? How do you find that? Where does it come from? Did God just give it to you and not to me? Yeah. Where, do you, where do you get it? It comes from salvation in Jesus Christ. And we get that from the Holy Spirit. And we know that by reading the Bible. That's why it's so important that we spend time in God's word every day to renew our minds, renew our spirits, to encourage us, to keep reminding ourselves of God's truth and not allow the world to tell us what it thinks is truth because the world is ever changing mm. and God never changes. You always seem like you're very joyful and happy in all of those movies that you do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but there are days where I don't feel the joy of the Lord. And yeah. the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and that's true because when I don't have joy inside of me, mm -hmm. I don't feel strong. I don't feel the strength of the Lord. So where do you find it? Even if you are a believer, what, mm -hmm. what do you do? Like, where do you go in your heart and in your mind? Or where yeah. do you go in the Bible to sort of uh, activate the joy again? Yeah, I think it depends on how you process things. I know for me, when I can feel overwhelmed or I just have too much work or I've been simply talking too much because it's a part of my job, I like to just shut down and that's where I recharge my batteries and mm. I do find the joy. I need to be quiet. I need to be still. I need to spend time with the Lord and pray. And that might look like, you know, 10 minutes. It might be an hour. It might be half the day in bed just reading my Bible. It, it just depends. But that's, that's kind of how I can recharge and, and then reflect and again, renew my mind in scripture to remind myself that this is what God's word promises me. Let's flip, flip the script a little bit and say, okay, when my circumstances are bad, it's important for me to keep the joy of the Lord. But what happens when circumstances are so great? You're on the top of your career, mm. your Christmas movie just crushed it in the <laughs> ratings, and you're thinking, woo, I'm the goat. How do you not operate out of pride when things are going mm -hmm. great and stay in that dependent upon the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Because sometimes pride can f make you oh. feel on top of the world, and that's actually a recipe for a disaster. Absolutely. That's something I'm so hyper aware of because I work in the entertainment industry. It's like the goal is to get puffed up and win awards and yeah. 
have great ratings and whatever. And I, I, and I think about it often because I, I don't want to be that person. I always want to stay humble before the Lord. And so I think that's when you have good friends or family or your husband or your wife or your kids, you need people around you to hold you accountable. And I, I'll say that to Val all the time or any of my good friends, if you ever see me acting like this or saying something like this, please tell me, yeah. you know, be a good friend, be a good spouse, be a, yeah. you know, you have to be honest. That's where truth and love comes in. And um, yeah, so Kirk, please, if yeah. that ever so happens. I'll just, hey, if you need me to, I'll just tell you, Candace, you need to get down off your high horse. Yeah. You just need to climb down off, off your queen's throne <laughs> yes. and you just need to come back down here with the yes. rest of us regular people. Yes. <laughs> um, who's the most joyful person you know? You, you know who is... <laughs> okay. One of the most joyful people in my life. I'm sure life. there's many. But... There are many. There are many. But the first person I just thought of because I call her, she's just the sunshine, is Mandy Young. I know Mandy <laughs> and she is. She sure is. I just love her. She's got a smile on her face. She's had some difficult life circumstances, incredibly yeah. difficult. Yeah. And she is so full of joy. And how does that joy affect you when you're around her? Like you just kind of burst into a smile when you thought of her just now. Yeah. Like what is it about joy that just It rubs you? off on you. Yeah. Joy rubs off on you. It's contagious. That's why kindness is so important because kindness too is contagious. When you smile at someone, it's hard for someone not to smile back. I know we already talked about this, but some, somebody might be watching us right now going, you know, Candace, I love everything that you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm just not quite sure uh, where, I, where I can find this joy because my circumstances, uh, you know, it doesn't work out like it does in, in in all, in all the romantic movie. movies that <laughs> you do. Movie. You know, I've, I've had broken relationships. Mm -hmm. I have financial problems. I've got health challenges. And I really find it hard to wake up in the morning and put, the, put on the happy face. Mm -hmm. Where can I find joy? Mm -hmm. Where do I start? What would you tell them? Well, the Bible says that only God gives us peace that, per, that surpasses all understanding. Only true peace can come from the Lord. And circumstances are always going to be there. I mean, some things may not ever get better. And that's why I think it's so important to be heavenly minded and focused. Um, but I think there's such great value in community mm -hmm. and friendships yep. and, the, and the body of Christ. That's what those are. That is one of the things the church should should be doing if they're doing it well, is to be community and to help others that are going through difficult times. That's such an important point. If you don't have a family support system, something that's built in, but you're a believer, you do have a built in support system and that's the family of faith. Mm -hmm. And so we should hear the encouragement from our pastors. We should uh, just take advantage of the opportunity of our brothers and sisters to be praying for us and to know that we have a Father in heaven. And there's a built-in family of faith there that can make all the difference. Yeah, and pray, 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 pray. Praying should never be a last resort, ever. It should be the start. Yeah. <laughs> get, get on your knees, get on your face, pray wherever you're standing or seated. Yeah. All the time. I pray for parking spots, you know, when I'm at Target. <laughs> that, that was supposed to be a joke. Silly segue, but my point is God, you know, God doesn't always answer prayers the way we want him to, but it's so important because it, it not only connects us to him, but it's just saying, Lord, I am dependent upon you no matter, no matter what happens. But you reach out to him and you pray and you ask and... Um, You'll be amazed at if you don't have a prayerful life or you don't know how to pray. It's just talking to God. I am not one of these spiritual super powerhouse prayer people verbally. Like I love praying, but um, you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to stand up and say, let me pray for all you. Cause I, you know, I don't feel yeah. as confident in that, but 
I pray so much and I see God answer so many things to the smallest tiny things and sometimes really big things. But when I, when I forget to pray and I stop praying just a week or two goes by, I notice such a massive difference yeah. in my life. And you just, it connects you to God so much because when you see the little prayers being answered, it's reminding you every day, God's with me, God's with me. And we know God's with us, but again, we always have to renew our minds. We always have to remind ourselves and encourage and, and be present with Him. So that's my other piece of advice. Pray, pray hard. Next up, we're gonna talk about how to be kind in a world of keyboard warriors. It goes without saying that our world today needs kindness. In, in an era of opposing opinions and agendas and perspectives and values, people often get angry with those who don't think like them and act like them and believe like they do. Candace, you, you uh, spent years on a, a worldwide stage sharing your views alongside other people who share very different views. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those views could be personally offensive. Sometimes they can be dishonoring to God. Sometimes uh, ratings get better when you ditch the kindness and you really go at each other. But you never, you never really did that. And I think that's one of the things that people appreciate about you. How do you manage to stay kind with people who are not being kind in return. I always try to think about their perspective or where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. From, um, Of course, sometimes if, if we're talking about maybe an angry person, there's probably a lot of hurt behind that. Mm. I'm not a psychologist, obviously, but there, you know, there, there's a lot to that that we can look into and thought, you know, they've probably been, been burned or hurt in some way yeah. that they now feel very passionate and can be aggressive about this perspective. So I think trying to look at it, hear, the circum or hear their perspective and have empathy can help diffuse that. But, you know, a gentle voice, it, it, it always diffuses, or I shouldn't say always, but for the most part, I believe it will diffuse a situation. And that's why yeah. I've always tried to keep that gentle, calm voice in the face of an yeah. argument. Yeah, and, 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 and again, that's just proving God's words true. In, in Proverbs, it says that a gentle word, a kind mm -hmm. word will just sort of like calm a situation, mm -hmm. but an angry word is gonna stir up even more yeah. strife. W what's harder? Is, is it harder to stay kind to people who don't understand your Christian faith <laughs> and they're just sort of railing against your worldview? Or is it harder to, to stay kind with people who actually have Bible verses in their Instagram bio and they're still railing against you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like an easy question to answer. Uh, I would much rather talk to a person that is not a faith that's angry at me. It's much easier actually than to talk to a person of faith that that strongly disagrees or doesn't think that I'm Christian enough or I don't have the right theology or I'm a different denomination and get so angry when we're supposed to be one body in Christ. And yes, of course, there are going to be differences in theology and denomination and all of yeah. that. But I find it much more difficult to talk to those people, which makes me so sad yeah, we should... for the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah, why is it hard? Why is it hard when it's with somebody within the family? Oh. I guess because we feel like you should know me better than this, or you should, yeah, right? Like, or like, mm -hmm. where's the grace? Or where's the exactly? Oh, know, like Kirk. I, I expect this from somebody else who doesn't understand the grace of God, but you, right? Like, you should know this. You should know this, and that's kind of what. I hear a lot too is like, well, Candace, you should know this. You should be doing it this way. Well, yeah. I might have a different opinion. And, and then they, then they might say, well. If, if you weren't a believer, I'd expect you to do that. But you're a believer. You should know better than to do that. <laughs> yep. Why is kindness so, so, so powerful, do you think? Kindness has to be learned because we are sinful beings by nature and we have to be taught to be kind. It is not a natural quality that as human beings mm. we have. We are by nature s selfish mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And so kindness takes effort. I think that's why it's so challenging. We have to learn it, we have to apply it, it becomes an action, we have to be mindful of it. And sometimes it's just easier to let 
the emotions and the anger and some of those other um, unhappier emotions just get the best of you because they want to come out so fast. But having kindness means you do have to stop and think about it because it's not the natural instinct. Yeah. And, and then you have to honestly think about, okay, how, how should I respond to this? Yeah. What would Christ want me to do? How can I be the best ambassador or representative of Christ right now in this situation? Mm. And it's difficult. I think that's why it's so hard and challenging for a lot of us. And the times when I feel kindness affect me so powerfully is when I know that person had every right to just <laughs> rail on me because yep. I'm being a jerk yep. or I'm being selfish or unkind and they show me kindness instead. I go, yep. oh, I know. I'm like I know. coals on top of my yeah. head, burning yeah. coals on top of my head. <laughs> it's a scripture reference. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. And, I f and my conscience wakes up and I say, mm -hmm. you know what? I didn't deserve for that person to be kind to me. And that's when it most powerfully affects yes. me. Is it, is it really what, what we just talked about? Is it realizing that like I've been given kindness I don't deserve mm -hmm. and that's what motivates me? Because there's times where I'm around difficult people and I'm like, bro, I just, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, we're not on the same page. Yeah. And I just don't feel like dealing with you. Yeah, but kindness doesn't mean you have to be agreeable. It just means you have to be kind and respectful within the conversation or whatever action is taking place. And so I always think that, you know, sometimes people will even mistake me or, or a, a Christian in general, in general and think that we um, are passive or um, should be meek, but, that, but being meek doesn't mean strong. And um, th you know, those are all false things. We can still be kind mm. and loving, but, but speak truth and be strong in those words and stand up for God, yeah. stand up for what's right. We just don't have to yell and scream and pound our fist yeah. and um, just say things that we'll regret. Yeah. It's about being calm and, and sober in demeanor and having those respectful conversations, even if they're uh, not in agreement. Yeah, so, so here's an interesting thought. Sometimes we're kind and we're doing what the Lord wants us to do and the results aren't what we think they should be. Lord, I was kind, but this whole thing just blew up in my face. Um, and so the question is, how can we be kind without becoming a doormat for right. somebody? And yet, Jesus was really kind and he wound up on a cross. Mm -hmm. Are there boundaries for kindness so that I don't become a doormat? Or do I go full, is it a full send with turn the other cheek and maybe I wind up on a cross? When I, when I get into this situation, I just call my husband. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah. I've tried being kind. It's not working. I need you to step I need, in here And bring Boris. <laughs> and bring and Boris, Boris some the days, Rottweiler. Some days you just need that. That's right. Did Boris have breakfast? <laughs> hey, don't give it to him. Just come on down here to the set. I got somebody for him to meet. It's a challenge. It really is because sometimes kindness doesn't work in the sense that you're, you're yeah. not getting the result because some people are, are stubborn. Yeah. And, uh, and, and not logical or just mean people. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, but that, that was to my point is that you can still be respectful and kind, but it doesn't mean you have to be a doormat. I don't, there's, there's no boundary on kindness. You can't be too kind, but it doesn't mean you can't be strong and tough at the same time. You're, you're exactly right. I think maybe we could look to the verse um, in scripture that says to us, what does God require of us but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Mm. And I go back to that sometimes. I go, mm -hmm. okay, I, 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 gotta, I gotta do the right thing. I wanna love mercy, and that's being kind, and I wanna be humble, and I walk with God trusting that even if this doesn't turn out, if that person doesn't see that my kindness is, you know, is undeserved and therefore changes, 
God's gonna work the whole thing out. Right. In the end, he's still working all things together yep. for good for those who love him. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and that's exactly where I wanna be. Even if it winds me up in a place that's painful, uh, mm -hmm. I know that nothing's gonna separate me from the love of God and he's gonna work all this out for our good. Yeah, and as someone who tries to practice kindness every day, I'll tell you, when I, when I don't practice kindness, it makes me feel bad. I don't, I don't wanna be that person. Yeah. So there's also another result of that where, where um, I would rather let, I want that to sit with God. I want God to ultimately have justice and his will be done. Because if I, if I go the other way, it just, it doesn't sit well with me and God. And I want to be, I want our relationship to be good before yeah. I just get the last in, the last word in with someone else. Yeah. It's much more important to me to say, okay, I might not win this battle, but I'm good with God. And that gives me peace. Hasn't this been awesome? I mean, what a, <laughs> what a great hour to hang out together uh, with the fam and talk about joy um, and strength and peace and kindness. Any, anybody want more joy and peace and kindness in your house? Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is great stuff. And, and, and to know that it's the gift of God that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that even if we don't have the kind of support system around us to encourage us and to pick us up when we're down, God gives us a support system that's built into the family of faith. Um, that's why it's so important to read his word, take advantage of all the tools in the toolbox of the believer. We have his spirit, we get wisdom from heaven, we get the fellowship of being with other members in the family of faith. We can pray and talk to God and uh, all of that starts to bubble up inside of us and it can come out in the joy that'll transform situations and other people and bring, even bring them to faith. Mm. So great. Candace, thanks so much for thanks hanging out with for... your big bro for a little while. <laughs> I and, loved it. And uh, just sharing all this wisdom with us. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the TVN YouTube channel. We hope this video blessed you. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and then tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And please share the video with a friend who needs to hear it. Thanks, and God bless you.